There was a time when I wanted to buy a muscle car. And I was looking at a few of them, and I got some good advice from my father. He said, Matt, those cars were crap when they were new. Why would you want one now that it's 40 years old? And he made an excellent point, because these cars weren't built very well, and most of them have not stood the test of time. But all of that seems to go out the window the second you turn the key. I'm Matt Farah, and you're watching Tune. John Hotchkiss knows a thing or two about suspension tuning. Since 1993, his company has been helping muscle car owners bring their rides into the modern age with state-of-the-art suspension and chassis components. And this is his showpiece. The 1970 Dodge Challenger TA with a 340 and a six-pack. And while the 340 V8 is as useless for drag racing as a rear wing is on a Civic, its lighter weight and higher redline make it great on a road course. Now these things handled sketchy at best back in the day, but we had to find out just how much Mr. Hotchkiss could improve it. For that, we'll need a racetrack. Because we're on a budget, we weren't able to get a track all to ourselves today. We came to a track day, which is what you guys would see if you want to go to the track. Extremespeed.com. You go to their website, you sign up for their track days, and they divide it into run groups, uh, and that's good. More people on the track, more fun for everybody. The bad news is I will be out there trying to review this car on the track while surrounded by about 50 other cars, none of which are muscle cars. I see a couple Evos, STIs, uh, 350Zs. Uh, I got a Camaro in front of me, uh, Ariel Adam behind me. Let's feel the power. Man, does that sound easy or what? Oh, I can already feel with the steering, the handling is going to be good. How about the brakes? Oh, that's, a, that's kind of a squishy pedal though. I'm gonna, that's going to take some getting used to, I think. Turns 8 and 9 can be kind of scary when you don't know the car, so... Yeah, brake pedal travel is a little more than I'm used to. Race seat is so important in a muscle car. When you're driving an old muscle car, it feels like you're going fast even when you're not. And obviously some of these modern cars are showing me what fast really is right now. I'm not embarrassing myself, but I'm definitely not hauling ass like I would if I was in a new car. I'll be totally honest with you right now. And I'm probably going to get another point by soon. What are you going to do? I got the only muscle car out here. The fact that I'm not in the dirt right now is pretty damn amazing. Something tells me that if I wanted to build a track car, I wouldn't start with a 1970 Challenger. But it does make you have plenty of respect for the guys who used to race these things in the 70s. I mean, guys like Bob Bondurant winning Le Mans in a Cobra, Sam Posey out on the track racing against bosses in Z28s and one of these things. This is a Challenger. It's a Dodge f***ing Challenger. So to get out here and drive it and have it be difficult, sort of what I expected. Session ends right as I started to get comfortable with the car, of course. Now we're gonna head into the pits and I'm gonna try something a little bit more modern. What do you say? This is the 2011 RTR Mustang GT. It has a supercharger, so it goes fast. It has big brakes, so it stops short. It has racing seats, so you can drive it properly without hanging onto the wheel. It has Hotchkiss suspension, so theoretically, it should go around corners too. But most importantly, it sounds like it's about to win the Daytona 500. All right, here we go. 2011 Mustang GT. 
560 wheel horsepower, big brakes, full suspension. Start off, you got the supercharger, Magnuson TVS 2300 blower kit. It's quiet and it makes 560 of the tires. We got Willwood big brakes. We got Hotchkiss suspension. We got everything we need to get out on the track and drive fast. Now the suspension in this car, similar to the BVI Autosport Porsche that I drove in that they removed all the rubber bushings and they only had the metal spherical balls. Not a ton of torque from this motor. It's a high compression motor, relatively small displacement. Torque's in the 400s, but the horsepower way up there. And it does handle. I trust this car a little more. It's got full RTR body kit. That's Vaughn Gittin Jr. set up. So you get the side skirts, you get the wheels, you get the nose piece, you get all the good stuff. But I'm gonna let these guys by because I can't concentrate. Try to think about talking and driving at the same time is ridiculously hard. The thing about muscle cars in general is people tend to not use them for stuff like this. The Mustang tends to change that. You see a lot of Mustangs at track days, but they're really not known for their handling. Yes, they can handle, but they're not known for it. With the Hotchkiss suspension, the turn-in feels crisper, the rebound is better, we've removed all the rubber from the car, so the metal bushings help keep things in line, give everything a more precise feel, and of course, this 5-liter engine, unlike the 340 in the other car, which is sort of a mild tune, 400 horsepower, this thing is just a, a, an animal. So much power, it, it can easily overpower the tires before you know it. I think I better put this car away before a formula car ends up under my rear bumper and I have to buy a very expensive Mustang. It's been a good day here at Willow Springs and I've learned a few things. Number one, if you are going to drive a muscle car, you must upgrade the suspension. Okay, you must, because compared to every stock muscle car I've ever driven, this is leaps and bounds beyond that. Now I know the first session was a little scary, a lot of traffic, new car, valuable car, trying to talk about it and not wreck it at the same time. But by the end of the day, like all old valuable muscle cars, the more comfortable you get with it, the better it drives, the better it feels. And by the end of the day, I feel like I can comfortably get this car around a track quickly. I love the power. Love the sound, love the looks, and the suspension ties it all together along with the brakes to make it totally trackable. Now, the new Mustang GT. This thing already handles great from the factory. Does the Hotchkiss suspension make it better? Definitely. Does the power work for it? It's a lot. It's so much power, in fact, that I think the car doesn't have enough rubber. And upon conferring with the owner, Mike, he agrees. He wants bigger tires in the back, and I agree with him there. But again, the power, tons of it, it feels good, it definitely feels quicker than, eh, it's right in Shelby, ter Shelby territory, let's just leave it at that, it's close. Either way, if you don't want to buy a Shelby, you don't want to buy a Boss, you want to start with a stock GT, here's a great example of what to do. Brakes and suspension first, then power. Brakes and suspension first, then power. That's the lesson we need to take away from this. So. Matt Farah here. Thank you guys for watching. Little housekeeping, we have a new audio podcast on The Smoking Tire. You can download it on iTunes, also via RSS at thesmokingtire.com. Check out our Dylan Optics ads. We will hook you up with a free Smoking Tire t-shirt if you buy a pair through our website. Zach, what else? Nothing. Zach's got absolutely nothing. Thank you guys for watching. For Matt, the whole Smoking Tire crew, and those of us at Drive, I will see you guys next week right here on Tuned.